It's Christmas in February. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. Today, we're reviewing another brand new model I haven't featured on the show. Yes, it's an Explorer, but it's in the custom format. However, the colors were done by the Mod Collection, so we'll have some explaining to do. Which, if you're not familiar with what the Mod Collection is, it's where Gibson refurbishes their factory seconds. We document their new releases every Sunday around 7 p.m. But inside here, we have a green Explorer Custom. You've always got to be fast to get the cool mod collection guitars, but this just spoke to me. It said yes. If you're going to document a, an Explorer Custom, it might as well have a cool fancy finish. So you're probably noticing that the edges look a little bit different. That's because it's kind of like a, a deep red into almost kind of a pinkish metallic flake. It's kind of hard to describe what this color is, but it is a full-on gloss refinish. This really is like a chameleon flip-flop finish. It goes from more of like a subdued teal green to more of like a bright pine tree green. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show that off too well in camera because it's not just like the darkness to the lightness. It's like actual flip-flopping. You see right here how it's so dark and then it's a little bit more of a lighter pink. Just imagine that as a flip-flop in person and that is exactly what this is. But first impressions here, oh my goodness, these have ridiculously chonky necks. So in 2016, when Gibson kind of revived the Explorer Custom, Flying V Custom, Firebird Custom, also throwing in for good measure, the SG and the Les Paul Custom, I always thought they were kind of cool and wanted to document them. So it's nice that I can grab a couple out of the mod collection that are just a little bit more special than the rest. But now I can definitely say, if you like big chunky necks, these are like the exact same as what you find on the Karina Explorers. I wasn't necessarily expecting that. Because prior to this, the only Explorer Custom that I had before was pretty much the Lizzie Hale signature because those were a great way to get an Explorer Custom at Gibson USA pricing. So how is a regular Custom Explorer different from a regular Explorer, I guess you could say? Well, it's the binding along the body. The ebony fretboard with the binding along it. Some Explorers have binding normally, but not always. But they do not get a bound headstock for whatever reason. Sometimes you will find the odd model that does have it. For example, the Dave Mustaine Flying Vs that have the Explorer headstock. But for whatever reason, not the Explorer Customs. And I believe Gibson first started to do these in like the early 2000s. But again, that 2016 is when they revamped this lineup and have had it in production ever since. But let's go ahead and see what year this one is. Looks like it's a recent production from 2022. And there we can see our mod stamp. So that means we will have the true ebony fretboard and not rich light. Gibson used rich light from about 2011 until early 2019. So if that's a spec that bothers you, find one later than that. I've always been kind of on the fence about these Explorer Customs. I've just found them to be ridiculously expensive for what they are. These are up to 5,299 brand new. But nowadays the Explorer Karinas are like 10 grand. So in comparison, they've started to look a little bit more attractive price wise. But that's why a lot of people went after those Lizzie Hales, as I was saying earlier. It's like half the price. But sometimes you can get good deals on these in the demo shop if you don't have to have a cool custom color like this one. We've got the original box tag that calls this one Holiday Ornament. And then we've got our COA. It's not the original COA for the guitar because they have to reissue them in the mod collection. And we also get our limited two-year warranty. Even if you buy a mod collection guitar and you sell it, this is a transferable warranty, but it's only for playability. So like, if you start to get finish checking in your finish or it wasn't finished perfectly, they're not covering that. I mean, they're already selling it to you at a discount, right? But if your neck starts to warp because of something they did, or the nut was done bad, or your pickups aren't wired in correctly, that's when you send it back into Gibson and they fix it for you. Because a lot of times they will mess with the electronics on these guitars as well as the finish. As far as how this one was graded, looks like just very minor scuffing in some areas. So to learn more about this very interestingly colored Explorer Custom, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take a look at its parts and specs. Here on the workbench, I think you can kind of see the flip-flop a little bit better. That's different from just metallic flake. 
because that is a completely different color, which makes it pretty cool if you like all these different colors. But let's go ahead and take a look at our pickups. I did verify the specs. They are the exact same as a regular one, so you can use this video as a comparison to see if you'd like the typical ebony finished ones that Gibson sells all the time. But they just use very standard pickups, the Gibson 490R in the neck and the typical partnership of the 498T in the bridge. And the readings within the circuit are 13.75 in the bridge, 7.72 in the neck, and the middle just for fun, 4.94. Pretty much the standard pickup set that you would find in a Les Paul Custom since the early 90s. For a regular custom, that's not a particular year reissue anyway. But here you can see our long neck tenon within our neck pickup cavity, and there's not too much going on in our bridge pickup. But these are solid mahogany bodies. They do not have a maple top. But that doesn't mean flame top explorers don't exist. You might enjoy the E2 CMT that we talked about in this episode. Moving on to our bridge, it is a Nashville style one, so no ABR1s on this particular year of production. API branded. Then we have a regular full weight tailpiece, gold on this one. I always thought modern day Explorer pick guards don't line up very well with the body, but it's funny how the custom one, it's got the multiply binding, so it's almost like you got almost 10 <laughs> stripes of binding up here. As you get the multiply of the pick guard, as well as the multiply of the binding on the body, but you do still have that finish underneath here if you wanted to put like a clear guard on it. The toggle switch is pretty basic. And we have two volumes, neck and bridge, and a master tone. But moving on from that mahogany body, we have a mahogany neck that's topped off with an ebony fretboard for this particular year. 22 medium jumbo style frets. We've got the real mother of pearl block inlays with binding along the edges with the usual 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length with the 12 inch fretboard radius. The neck measures 1.69 inches at the nut and 2.06 by the 12th. This ought to get interesting. First fret neck depth, 0.96 and then 1.03 by the 12th. This does a pretty accurate representation of showing you just how chunky that neck is. Not necessarily the roundedness of it, but just look at the depth of on that. That's crazy. First fret and 12th fret. If you like big R7 style necks or an R8, this is exactly what you want. I'm really glad I reviewed and demoed this because now I look at these completely differently than I did in the past. Here's what our truss rod cover looks like. It's the standard style. And again, we don't have any binding on here. You either hate that or you're okay with it. Seeing it on the Mustangs, I can see why they don't do it for all of them, but it's a custom. It should have binding everywhere. But at least we get the Gibson Mother of Pearl logo. Moving on to the back, it's like looking at a completely different guitar. Now, unfortunately, this back plate is so stuck on there, probably because of the thick finish that we can't see inside of it. I'm sorry. Gonna be three Gibson branded pots, nothing too crazy. Got your custom shop multiply output jack plate over here, your strap button very close to the edge, and the other one up here. But besides the whole flip flop finish, nothing too crazy going on back here. Except for I do need to point out a nasty ding. I think I accidentally did that. My stand fell over on this guitar. Like that was a freak accident. But you can see a little bit of finished, I don't know if discoloration is the right word. It almost just looks like it needs buffed up a little bit more in these areas. Because I noticed a spot like that right there. There's a couple right there on the neck and like another small one right here. But this one does not get a demo shop serial number. It just has the regular custom shop one there dating it to 2022 and it's marked mod. All said and done, just a hair over eight and a half pounds. That's not bad for as big as this guitar is and all being chunky mahogany. They must have used some nice lightweight stuff. Let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how this one sounds.
tones, they're okay. I don't really feel like playing clean stuff on this guitar though. But I do want to mention one thing, the strap button placement on Explorers, it's always pretty bad. I wouldn't say this is a neck divey guitar necessarily, but it does want to kind of sit perpendicular to you. But the angle that it puts your strap, Maybe it would help if I had a newer one, but it's always like halfway on. So I would highly, highly suggest strap locks for an Explorer Custom because it's happened to me more than once during this playing demo where it just flips off and I have to catch the guitar. <laughs> Let's go ahead and switch over to some distortion. <laughs> Let me know all about the Explorer Custom in this unique finish. What are my final thoughts on this thing? For me, I don't think the 490R, 498T is the correct set for this guitar. It just kind of sounded a little bit muddy. Maybe we need something a little bit hotter. But then again, Explorers tend to make you want to play some really heavy stuff. So maybe that's why we might need some dirty fingers or something in here. So for me, I would probably swap the pickups or maybe mess with my amp settings a little bit more. But as far as Explorer Customs in general, the big neck, I don't know if it fits this model because I always thought this was going to have a slimmer neck like most explorers do. And something about the binding and the modernized appointments just makes me feel that that thinner neck would match this guitar a bit better. But if you've always wanted a big fat chunky neck explorer and always thought you had to go for like a Karina explorer to get that, no, you don't. You can get one of these customs. So I guess that is the biggest difference between this one and a Lizzie Hale. The Lizzie's are a little bit thinner. So I would actually almost prefer one of those. But as far as our custom color here, maybe not everyone's favorite, but it is very flashy with the whole flip flop of the finish as well as the metallic nature on top of it. If you like red and green, this one's definitely for you. And if you would be interested in being the next owner of this one, you can find it on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. Thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.